Here's how to fight a Tyrannosaurus Rex and win. The Tyrannosaurus Rex is held up as the most fearsome and ferocious predator to ever walk this earth. And it's true. If you somehow found yourself in the presence of one, you would no longer be at the top of the food chain. But that does not mean that if you somehow encountered one of these mighty beasts, you wouldn't be able to fight your way back up that chain. So how could you fight a T-Rex and win? <laughs> Dinosaurs can't draw, let's go. Let's, let's, get, let's get going. The Jurassic Park franchise is arguably single-handedly responsible for dinosaurs' place in pop culture, and that especially applies to our obsession with T-Rex. In the films, the T-Rex itself is a character, an unstoppable and unpredictable eating machine with a roar that shakes your seats. But let's imagine that you found yourself in the park and had to face down one of these tyrant lizards like the film's protagonists. What could you do? How could you survive? How could you win? Let's begin by sizing up what you would be up against. Now, where is she? Ooh, that's bad, but that means she's around here somewhere. Since the original Jurassic Park film came out in 1993, scientists have gotten an even better idea of what the Tyrannosaurus Rex was like as an animal. In fact, the T-Rex is the single most studied fossil animal period. And one thing that we are absolutely sure about is its massive size. Now, where did she go? Now, instead of just showing you a picture or some fossil, I want to try to give you a real sense of how giant Tyrannosaurus Rex were. Oh, there she is. That is the tip of our T-Rex's tail, and that's how high it would be above the ground if we were both standing on the same surface. Now, I measured the length of my stride for the next bit. Let's get walking to see just how big a T-Rex is. Here we go. Yep, still tail, still above my head, still walking. Yes, more tail, and yes, we haven't even gotten to the legs yet. Keep walking. Ah, there it is, the first leg of our Tyrannosaurus. It is absolutely massive, and her hip doesn't even finish until it is 3.7 meters, or around 12 feet off of the ground and we still have to keep walking. Oh, man. And there is the other leg with muscles on it bigger than my head and face and body. <laughs> keep walking. And up there are the T-Rex's famously tiny arms, but tiny is relative. If her arms could make the motion, scientists estimate that she could bicep curl 195 kilograms, over 400 pounds. She's a Tyrannosaurus. And we gotta keep walking. <laughs> And finally, after walking 13 meters over 40 feet, only now do we come to the head of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is high above me right now. All in all, the largest Tyrannosaurus Rex were over 40 feet long, had masses over eight tons, and had a daily caloric intake that not even 475 large Mountain Dew sodas could satiate. Whoa, whoa, girl, easy, easy, here, here. Do the do. There you go. There you go. There you go. So we've known for decades that T-Rex were massive animals, but only in the last few decades since 1993 have we learned that dinosaurs like T-Rex may have looked very differently from what we've seen in the Jurassic Park films. Let's scale her down a bit. For example, the more we learn about dinosaur skin, the more that scientists think that dinosaurs like T-Rex may have been brightly colored like modern birds. And although T-Rex probably didn't have great feathers like modern birds, they may have been covered in proto-feather-like quills. No, not those quills. Yes, those. Same actor, though. Weird. Not only would the T-Rex potentially look different, it would potentially look different too. Unlike what the first JP implies, T-Rex may have had excellent eyesight. From digital reconstructions of T-Rex skulls and T-Rex eyes, scientists now know that the T-Rex had forward-facing tennis ball-sized eyes that would give it clear vision for up to six kilometers. For reference, our limit is one. 
So that's what you'd be up against, a giant, better than eagle-eyed, possibly Peter Quilled carnivore. So what are its biggest threats? Let's start with the obvious. The biggest threat to you, if you were facing down a Tyrannosaur, would be the mouth. The Tyrannosaurus Rex's entire body has evolved to basically just be a support structure for these ginormous jaws, including massive, massive biting muscles inside of its skull lining its jaws. That all combines to give the Tyrannosaurus Rex the biggest estimated biting force of any land animal to ever live, 57 thousand newtons or over 12,000 pounds of force. This is enough to literally chew through bone. Yeah, here girl. Yeah, that's right. Here, have a femur. There you go. There you go. She likes it. The other threats are less obvious, so I enlisted the help of Professor John R. Hutchinson, a friend and evolutionary biomechanist. He spends more time than most people thinking about Tyrannosaurs and has actually done research to establish the next threats that we are going to talk about. The first is speed. Now, according to Dr. Hutchinson's research into the physics and biomechanics of T-Rex leg movement, the dinosaur was not a fast runner, if it could run at all. However, it still might have a decent stomping speed of 11 miles per hour. That sounds slow, but don't underestimate it. You would still have to maintain a decent sprint in order to outrun this animal. Oh, speaking of. The other less obvious threat is another part of T-Rex anatomy, but it's not the mouth, it's the feet. While stomping around at 11 miles per hour, Dr. Hutchinson's models suggest that under every single step, there are 117,000 newtons of force. That's about the same amount of force that we calculated Iron Man would have at his knee if he was doing a superhero landing and smashing down on concrete from 30 meters up. It is more than enough to completely and totally smash you. So unless you were a really good sprinter, outrunning a T-Rex is probably not a good idea, nor is standing still as they had excellent eyesight. And playing dead doesn't work unless you want to be dead because they probably also had an amazing sense of smell. Stop it, so how do you survive a T-Rex attack? If you have to try and outrun a T-Rex, head for an area with a lot of obstacles close together that the beast wouldn't be able to immediately beast mode through, like trees in a forest. Because the Tyrannosaurus Rex has so much mass, so high up off of the ground, it should have a harder time steering that inertia around obstacles, which should give you time to get ahead of it, unless some director puts you in heels. A second option is to attack. Attack like Star Wars Rebels against the Empire. No, seriously. Because the Tyrannosaurus Rex was so top heavy, toppling a T-Rex could do serious damage to the animal. Dr. Hutchinson's research suggests that if an eight ton beast fell over a pivot point, its leg that was over three meters tall, the fall could literally kill it. So if you're feeling really lucky, try running a Tyrannosaurus Rex into a tripwire to topple it or grab some cable and run around the Tyrannosaurus legs like a snow speeder in the Empire Strikes Back. Then you just might make it. She fell on deck. He just can't catch a break. Your last resort is not very PG-13. It's to shoot her! At the end of the day, the Tyrannosaurus Rex is basically a giant reptile with the mass of a large African elephant. And so, tactics that work on large African elephants would presumably work on the T-Rex as well, like high caliber rounds or explosives. Or, as a very, very last resort, just like the elephant hunts of old, Dr. Hutchinson suggests that you could take a giant sword, run like a maniac towards the back of the animal, and swing and cut its Achilles tendy. This would incapacitate the beast, causing a fall, which is potentially fatal, or fatal blood loss. And just like that, your life found a way. So, how do you fight a Tyrannosaurus Rex and win? Well, if you have heavy weapons, 
use them. If you have some inaccessible crevice to crawl into where she cannot follow you, go hide there. Oh God, she's right behind you. Otherwise, try to find some obstacle laden path that she would have a hard time turning in or go for her legs like a Star Wars snow speeder or a crazy swords person and the Achilles tendy. Of course, you've already won this battle, historically and evolutionarily speaking, but it's always good to be prepared in case life, you know. Why? Take it from the Jeff Goldblum. Because science. In all the Jurassic Park movies, they do a pretty good job of showing just how powerful the T-Rex would be, but they, they, I, I came across one fact that they should show, and it's that we estimate that it's neck muscles to hold that jaw up and that massive head up off the ground. It's jaw muscles and neck muscles would be strong enough to grab 110 pounds and fling it 15 feet into the air. That's like grabbing a teenager flinging it up almost two stories, and then eating it, because it could eat about 500 pounds in one bite. Now that I say it out loud, I know why they don't show it. But they could. Thank you so much for watching, Jamie. If you like this video and you're watching on Facebook, like it. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that notification bell and subscribe because we get up to a lot of other stuff on this channel, like vlogs, which you can catch every Tuesday, and live streams that you can catch every Friday. And if you want more of me, you can head back to Nerdist.com or you can subscribe to Project Alpha at projectalpha.com for a free 30-day trial. And if you do that, you will get this show two days earlier than everyone else, and you can vote in our new show Show, Natural Selection, where me and Daniel Casey argue about very, very silly things. It's a lot of fun. If you want to check that out, do it. And then follow me here and there and everywhere.